Hello and welcome. This is a video to introduce you to the Behringer Xair XR18 uh, digital rack mounted mixer, a soundboard produced by Behringer. There are a number of different models uh, in this lineup uh, and any information uh, in this uh, video is likely to be applicable no matter which one you have. The focus is going to be on setting up one of these soundboards uh, for a church service, but if you have a different application, I'm sure that you'll still find the information useful. The Behringer XR18 is a digital rack mounted mixer. This means that it's different from a normal soundboard. It doesn't have the slides and dial dials that you'd normally expect to see in a soundboard. And that at first can be a little bit alarming. You have to ask yourself, how do I control this thing? Well, you do it through a computer or through a tablet or through a smartphone. And using Wi-Fi or a cable, you connect to the device and then manipulate it through one of these other devices. Now, you can do more with one of these other devices because you're not limited by the number of slides and dials you typically have on a soundboard. So you get greater control, you get better uh, visual representation of the sort of changes that you're making, and multiple people can be making changes at the same time. So the person who's the sound tech can be mixing the left-right mix at the same time that someone on stage using their uh, smartphone can adjust their monitor mix, rather than the sound engineer uh, and the, the person on stage yelling back and forth to say a little bit more of this or a little bit more than that, uh, the person on stage can simply make those changes for themselves. And working cooperatively, things can get done way faster. Xair Edit is an application for PC or Mac from Behringer.com. It allows you to control uh, the soundboard and make whatever changes you want. It also allows you to save information to the computer that you're using so that you can come back to it later. So different setups can uh, be set up for different services, different events, and then all you need to do is just like saving or, or recalling a computer file, you can have all of your settings come back up right away. So you have your rehearsal, you set everything up exactly how you want it, and then boom, it's all back when you're there for service time. Xair app is for Android or iOS, uh, available from the various stores, and it is uh, a handheld version of Xair Edit. It doesn't do quite everything that Xair does. Uh, it's a little bit stripped down, but everything that you would really want to have happen once you've got things set up, you can do it right from the app. And then Xair Q is an even more stripped down uh, version for if you want to give uh, someone control, uh, but they don't have the experience or knowledge to be able to, to adjust everything, you can limit what it is that they have access to. The first thing you're going to want to do is connect to your device. And there are a number of different ways you can do that. You see here uh, our Ethernet port, which allows you to connect an RJ45 cable uh, to the uh, soundboard uh, and have your computer directly connected by cable. And then you've got a switch right here in the middle that you're going to want to move to the left uh, to be able to do the Ethernet or to the right to do access point. The Wi-Fi client and the access point are the two ways that you can connect wirelessly to the device. Wi-Fi client is for when you have uh, internet in the building and a router that you have the password for. Access point is when you want to connect directly from the device to the soundboard, not using a router in between the two of them. And there's a few situations where one might be advantageous over the other one. If you don't have a router or you don't have the password for the router, then access point is a good option. You don't need anything between you and the soundboard. Uh, you're going to connect wirelessly up to four devices that way. Wi-Fi client is better than access point if you also need to access the internet because during access point mode, your smartphone or tablet or whatever connects to the uh, soundboard as its Wi-Fi connection. So then you can't connect to Wi-Fi to get internet from somewhere else. So that can be a bit of a limitation, uh, but there are situations where uh, it's useful. The best thing is usually for Wi-Fi client to be your way of managing things because then you're connected to the internet through the router and you also have access to the soundboard. So you can have multiple devices connected to the internet and connected to the soundboard both at the same time. In most situations, the center position Wi-Fi client is going to be what you're going to want. 
MIDI is the next uh, in the series of controls that we're looking at here. And MIDI is useful because you can add an external control surface to add buttons and dials to the soundboard that somebody right next to the soundboard can use. If you've got people who are nervous over the idea that this has no controls over it and they ask, well, what do you do if there's feedback and nobody has their phone out? Uh, this is a way to add in a few controls that are useful right there at the soundboard. USB is a way to connect a computer to the soundboard in a different way, not for controlling the settings of the soundboard, but for recording audio from the soundboard. And so uh, if you're familiar with devices where you can have multiple channels being transmitted to a computer at the same time, this is what that does. So you plug in the USB cable and then all 16 uh, channels can be controlled through a DAW, a DAW, or a digital audio workstation. This way you can record each individual channel separately and then manipulate it after uh, the, everything is said and done. So this is a great way to use this soundboard as a digital audio input. Next we have our inputs. And you'll notice that there are 18 inputs and the first two are special and the last two are special. The first two are high Z, which means that you can connect a guitar directly to them just plugging in to the back of your guitar and plugging into the soundboard. These are set up to be able to handle that. The last two are set up for coming from some sort of uh, pre-recorded sound source, either a computer or an MP3 player or something like that. The rest of the channels all are able to accept either XLR cable or quarter inch. Uh, and so whatever type of cable you've got, you can plug in either way to each of those individual channels. One of the ways in which a digital rack mounted mixer is different than a typical soundboard is the number of outputs available. You see here that there are six auxiliary channels plus the main left right plus the headphones. Ordinarily on a soundboard this size you might have two maybe four auxiliary outputs. Those are used for your monitor mixes, for in-ear monitors, for a hearing assist system, or a, a, a recording mix. So you've got six different places you can send sound other than the main left right speakers. This means you have much greater flexibility than a typical board and the reason for that is that you don't have to have all of the dials on top of the soundboard to be able to control the audio going to all those different places for every single channel. Because you've removed those sliders and dials you can do more because it's all done virtually and you can simply have as many as you like on the computer. Thank you for your kind attention. There'll be more to come.